Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today. There's only one story, and the story is which way is Bitcoin going? Is it going to drop all the way down to $4,000 or maybe $6,250 like this article talks about? Or is it going to go up to $8,000 and above? Let's take a look. But before we do that, I want to say thanks to everybody for bringing this channel up from zero subscribers all the way back at the end of November uh, 2019 uh, to over 25,000 subscribers as of today, April 11th, 2020. So just over four and a half months, uh, we went from nothing to 25K. So it's amazing to me that uh, we're able to do this uh, to get to this point. So I want to say thanks to everybody. And uh, again, this isn't uh, my channel. This is everybody's channel. Uh, the things that you guys write in the comment section, I take a look at, and that gives me direction as to which way we are going to go. So uh, thanks for everything, and uh, hopefully we can continue on and uh, do good things. So let's get into today's stories. So first and only up, Bitcoin 6250. Uh, so what this is talking about is the traders, traders and analysts, and they're predicting different things all over the board. But right now, from what I see, it doesn't look too bullish. We'll just say that. Many traders are expecting the price of the King Crypto to continue its bearish reverse. In their predictions, traders say that Bitcoin is targeting at least the 6200 area, but it might nosedive even lower. So real quick, let's take a look at the market today. April 11th, looks like we're at 67.93. Let's hit the refresh, maybe it went up, and nada. So that's where we are at, 67.93. Ethereum 155, Tether a dollar, always a dollar. XRP 18 cents, Bitcoin Cash 223. Hey, not too shabby, and then Bitcoin SV, after taking a nosedive, is uh, uh, just a little 3% over 24 hours. So not too shabby right now. So. This is going to go over a couple of different analysts and what they predict and uh, some TA stuff. But you know me, I am not uh, that much of a into TA. Mine is all about what is the news, what is going on out there, what is going to shape uh, this um, cryptocurrency digital asset space. So we'll take a look at this first and we'll go to the news a little bit later. So prominent trader Crypto Don Alt. Nice name. He has shared his prediction with his 138,600 followers on Twitter, saying that he is looking at three support levels uh, should Bitcoin close beneath the confluent resistance this weekend. And uh, first of all, let me tell you this. I have no idea what that is. No idea. So uh, I had to look it up because I do not trade. I'm not a TA person. And uh, it talks about, this was from April 9th. It states, data from the Confluence tool suggests that Bitcoin will have a hard time continuing with the trends above 7,400, especially with the strongest resistance at 7,436. And like we just saw, uh, we're looking at around $6,800, $6,700, and it's been dropping, so uh, not sure what to tell you. But how I got this information, uh, it brought me to this, this article, but there were some interesting aspects just here in and of itself. So this was all about a price prediction, again, April 9th. States Bitcoin USD delicate at 7200 is the bottom in confluence detector. And it talks about how the, the Bitcoin price holds above 7200 support, but a trader, Heinrich or Henrik Zeberg, predicts fall to $1,000. Great. Bitcoin USD could smoothly sail towards 8000 if the seller congestion at 7436 is cleared. So, what it's going to talk about here, it's going to talk about the other article we're going to go back to, is we need to hit specific numbers to sail all the way to 8,000. Right now, it doesn't look like we're hitting those numbers, so it might be more of a bearish trend. And also looking at uh, factors globally, which we're going to do in a little bit, uh, it does not look too fantastic. Anyhow, according to a cryptocurrency trader, macroeconomist, Henrik Zeberg, Zeberg, Bitcoin is delicately balancing above the 7200 support. Zeberg believes that most people are failing to understand both Bitcoin and gold. And in his opinion, both assets are grinding closer and closer to another wild sell-off. He predicts Bitcoin's fall to $1,000 after revising the target from $2,000. Now look, I am uh, not a big proponent of gold. However, it's been around for thousands of years and uh, it is a safe haven as they call it now that is debatable and is the, it is a subject for another video however i see it as uh the safe haven which are perfect which are bitcoin which could be a store of value 
and gold. It is an old school type of mentality that go towards gold and it is a younger generation that go, goes towards Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin uh, has many advantages over gold. However, uh, that will remain to be seen as things shake out. But this is what this trader is talking about. So let's uh, go back to the article. All right, this is back to uh, Don Alt. So the mark on the chart approximately in the 6250 area is, is his highest target among those for gigabulls. Uh, vocal bears may expect 4,200 to 4,000. The target in between the trader mentions is 5,250. So to make this simplified, uh, if it closes below 7,200, like we just talked about this weekend, then you can expect this. It's going to be $6,200 if you're bullish. And that's on a good note. It's about 5250 for realists and $4,000 for those bears out there. And this was a blow up of his actual Twitter, uh, what he was talking about as far as ranges. So you can see here 5250 for pretty much eh, the normal folks. Uh, gigables for the bullish, uh, maybe 6450, maybe 6200. And then the support for the bear charts, pretty funny, uh, around $4,000. So it all remains to be seen. Again, it doesn't look like we're going to hit those higher numbers over the weekend, but we will see it's only Saturday. Sunday is just around the corner. Moving on, trader Credible Crypto is drawing his followers' attention to the 6400 to 6200 marks, calling them crucial ones on the chart right now. Those are necessary for Bitcoin to hold, the trader elaborates. Otherwise, it may print more losses and head down to 5300. Uh, so, sure. And all he's saying here is if it, drop, if it drops below 6200, expect 5300. That's really all it is. And then uh, trader XOXO is a similar view. I'm not even going to read it because it, it's all the same stuff. And then the last one, this was the most interesting one, trader known as Satoshi Flipper. <laughs> Sounds more positive. And uh, he's expecting everything just to go to 7,000 no matter what, essentially. Not no matter what, but uh, he does make a, a pretty good uh, analogy, or not analogy, but uh, an assessment here. He says, Bitcoin below 7,000 is still a gift for me. Uh, maybe he probably bought it pretty early, maybe at the 2,000, 3,000 level, I don't know. But uh, here's how I'm hoping this will play out. But be ready in the, in the event we break down. However, if we do break down, I'll be adding a small fortune to my alt USDT pairs. I have another short hedge open for insurance. So I like this guy. I like I like his style. He's he's out there. He's like, look, if it goes up, I'm in a good position. If it goes down, I'm going to hedge my bet, and I'm still in a good position. And uh, I and he's just preparing himself for both scenarios. So you got to love that. So with all these different analysts and traders out there going, well, it could do this or it could do that based on these numbers and the Fibonacci levels and da 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 and things that I just do not get into, um, this is the problem that I see. We saw the economic report, and it's coming out fast and furious. We saw the unemployment rate um, go from $6 million for one week. Then the unemployment uh, benefits that were tried to be um, given out or the people that actually filed went up to like 6.5 million. So we're looking at an unemployment rate in the States uh, around 13%. And those numbers are only due to go up. And then from all you people who have been commenting uh, and telling me what's going on in your area, I know Canada is also being hit hard, Europe, Australia, very hard. So uh, this is just not, this is a global issue. And the coronavirus is, is wreaking havoc as it goes all the way through. So to me, the different levels that we see on charts is a good place to start. I mean, for you, if you're a TA person, but you got to back that up by real world data about what is going on. And I can only see negative aspects of this. And not only that, it's not just me. I mean, I'm going to let you listen to the U.S. Treasury Secretary and what he says about it. Let's get a sense of exactly where we are, not just today, but look around the corner a little bit. What are the next turns in this crisis as far as we can discern them? We hear the Fed did something really good for the markets. At the same time, we also heard this week so many tenants, for example, not being able to pay their April rent. I think the, what the Fed did is surely right for the short run. I think it's a mistake always to think that the provision of liquidity can override fundamentals and that lending money can fill fundamental gaps. We're having no revenue effectively for a large number of retail establishments. We're having no revenue for many 
landlords, uh, residential uh, landlords. We don't know how this is going to play out. Tenants aren't going to pay landlords. In many cases, Staples, for example, said it's not going to pay landlords at all. What about landlords? Landlords are all levered way up. Are they going to pay banks? If they don't pay banks, are, are banks going to be able to meet their liabilities given the depletion of their capital? How's that going to end? The Fed can make a lot of loans, and then it can somebody can decide where the seniority of those loans is relative to other claims. But a substantial part of this is surely going to end up back on taxpayers, and there may well be some very substantial uncertainties along the way. So I don't think this is resolving problems. This is postponing uh, problems, and we're going to see how they get dealt with uh, over time. I'm not sure what the answer is going to be. That's never reassuring when a former U.S. Treasury Secretary says, I'm not sure what the answer is going to be, as he was involved in the policy that shaped the nation. So here we are in a dire situation with the coronavirus coming all the way through. Small businesses have shut down, people have been laid off, and there is just a huge economic downturn. The problem here is that as these types of issues start to resolve, as we start to get um, less infection rates, less death rates, as we start to reduce the social isolation and people actually able to go back to work, a lot of situations, uh, these people have no jobs to go back to. So now they're in the process of finding new jobs. Also, these small business owners that were in business, now they are applying for loans. There's only so much that they can actually get. There's only so much money that they're going to uh, be able to use to keep their businesses open when everything starts to fire back up. And to me, I see this as a very negative downturn coming up. Now, I could be wrong. We could uh, hit everything on all cylinders starting in, you know, a month and a half to two months. Everybody goes back to work and boom, everything fires up. I just don't see it like that. And uh, the former U.S. Treasury Secretary is kind of in the same boat. He's just like, I'm not even sure what's what's going to happen. So uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting times, but expect turbulence, and that's really all I can say. Now, there is one big thing coming up, and that is the earnings report is due to come out on Tuesday, April 14th. If we see uh, massive negative earnings uh, as far as like huge or big businesses coming out, also the unemployment numbers as they start to uh, climb, if they skyrocket, look at what's going to happen to the market. I expect it to tumble uh, quite precipitously. Uh, and very uh, quickly. I just, when I look at the S&P 500, when I look at the cryptocurrency market, it just kind of astounds me that uh, things are actually going up. And uh, it's just like, I don't know what is driving it. I mean, there's uh, economic factors as far as like the, the President of the United States is trying to, you know, give a stimulus package for trillions and trillions of dollars. However, you can't print your way out of this. It just doesn't work like that. Anyhow, so those are all the uh, different parts of it, but let's play devil's advocate here. Uh, let me show you the flip side of this, because for one negative aspect, we can take a look at the positive. So let's take a peek. So uh, article talks about shorting Bitcoin in the current market. Wiser investors will reconsider. So after Bitcoin's unceremonious return under 7,000 on 10th of April, Mark Dow, it's a good name, former IMF economist, made waves after he claimed that another bearish turn for the world's largest digital asset could be incoming. Highlighting the presence of strong overhead, resistance for Bitcoin, Dow revealed on Twitter that it is a textbook opportunity to short Bitcoin. However, although nothing is certain when you're dealing with volatile assets in a turbulent global economy, it's imperative to identify the signs in the industry. And then, of course, they're going to go over a bunch of TA stuff. Great. Um, but here's the hard data. Investors were inactive, now they are becoming active. After continuous reports about an influx in Tether, as Bitcoin trading USDT tripled after the market collapse in March, on 7th of April was reported that a trend reversal was taking shape in the market. So, so this is from Glassnode, they do a lot of good, uh, great data gathering. So there was a huge drop off here, seems to bottom out, and then there's a big reversal coming up in the other way. So to, to me, it's if you were able to catch that Bitcoin 
uh, able to catch that falling knife as it went from, you know, 7,000 to 6,000, 5,000, on to 3,900, or maybe even 4,200, somewhere near the bottom. Uh, you made a great play. Now, here's my question to everybody out there. If you were able to do that or somewhere around there, did you take profits at some point or were you just going to write it all the way up? Uh, it's always a, a mystery to me as far as like what people would choose to do. Me personally, I'm not a trader, so I'm just going to I'm just going to hold on <laughs> for for the next uh, bull run, but a lot of traders they like to let it, you know, go down. Uh, hit hit a certain mark and then sell at a, you know when they get profits and if you haven't taken profits when are you going to that's the big question moving on it says a couple of days later the futures market came back into play as the open interest on institutional platforms such as the CME and backed started rising the man the demand for Bitcoin futures contracts was on the rise and as previously reported retail exchanges were surmounting higher call buys with expectations of Bitcoin crossing 8,000 by the end of the month. So there's two things here when I read this. First, when I read it, I thought that the Bitcoin futures contracts was the driver for Bitcoin crossing 8K. But when I read it again, it's just the belief by some retail buyers, or as they say, it's uh, retail exchanges. So now we're going to get to hash rates. So Bitcoin's hash rate has been rather fickle over the past few weeks, but since 29th of March, the hash rate has gone back over the 100 terahashes per second range after concerns over minor capitulation subsided. So let's take a look at that hash rate. And of course, the hash rate is the uh, computational power of all the mining rigs that are on the Bitcoin network. So we can just see rise, 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 rise here. And then uh, March 7th came along and then boom, big crash. But now we see a big uptick of what is happening with Bitcoin miners. I think there's a couple reasons. First of all, the Bitcoin halving is going to happen on May 11th or May 12th, somewhere around there. Plus, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin uh, SV just had their Bitcoin halving a couple days ago, 24 hours apart, of course. Um, so all those miners, they don't want to mine there right now. I mean, not all of them, but most of them, because they're like, look, it's the same effort, the same electricity I got to pay for, but I get half the reward. I'll just go to the Bitcoin network. So it's the same type of thing. Um, now, there may be a little bit of a difference. If you are a miner, please correct me where I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like a lot of those miners are coming over the Bitcoin network to increase that hash rate because they want to get on in on it before the halving happens on May 11th because then all three, essentially, Bitcoins uh, are going to be, uh, their rewards are going to be cut in half from 12 to 12.5 to 6.25. So we will see. Moving on. So for all those things, here's my final thoughts. Um, like we just talked about, I don't see how the traditional markets and cryptocurrency markets uh, can last right now the way that they're going, especially the S&P 500. I think on Friday, it had a huge, I know this week was one of the Dow's top 10 uh, efforts or rallies ever, which is just astounding to me. I don't understand how that's working, uh, especially with the earnings report going to come out. I do not expect it to be high. Now, there's more articles like this one. Uh, there's different articles about, uh, we've got one about, you know, BitMEX. Arthur Hayes says Bitcoin likely to revisit 3K soon as all asset classes crash, essentially. And there's another one about JP Morgan, Bank of America, Deutsche Bank predict a major recession coming. So if we have those types of articles, I mean, I can go over them, but it's just like beating you over the head with the same type of information. I don't want to do that. So to me, uh, it makes sense that some people had a short play on March 13th. Um, but with the coronavirus shutting things down, I can only imagine what the earnings report is going to state on Tuesday, April 14th. If the numbers are bad, which I expect them to be, uh, I can expect a bigger downturn than what we've already seen already. Now, since not even the former U.S. Treasury Secretary has no clear idea of what's going to happen, how can whales go all in? Meaning, if we have all these different people with huge amounts of money just sitting on the sidelines, how could they have gone in all on March 12th or March 13th or whenever it was that we had that huge crash? I don't think they all did. I think they had a short play. They go, look, uh, there's a falling knife. I'm going to pick up a lot of uh, cheap things, whether that be in the cryptocurrency market or traditional market. It doesn't matter. But I think the smart money is sitting on the sidelines waiting for either the earnings report or the other shoe to drop. I mean, people like Warren Buffett. Um, he's, this was an article written, uh, when was this? March 14th. And it's talking about he's ready on the sidelines with 128 billion in spare cash to buy stocks. And he hasn't moved yet. 
And uh, whether you believe that he's one of the greatest investors or if he's lost a step because of his age, uh, you have to understand, he probably knows what's going on a little bit better than most of us. He probably runs in different circles than we do. I don't hang around with billionaires. Maybe he knows something that we don't. And maybe, just maybe, there is something big about to happen in the next coming weeks and months. But only time will tell. All right, that's it. So I want to say thanks again for uh, sticking with me. And that's it for today's video. If you like these videos, there are going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.